welcome to episode number seven of the VR Pimp Podcast. I'm your host, Scotty Velvet, and in this episode, I'll be speaking with Maurice Optibik, who is the Chief Technology Officer at Kiru, which is an award-winning tech company based in Amsterdam. Now, Kiru has been active in the teledildonics industry since 2013, when they began developing their popular Onyx and Pearl devices, along with a unique technology that enables users to be intimate with each other through an online application. Their latest product is called the Fleshlight Launch, powered by Kiru, and it is integrated with what they refer to as Feel Me technology, which allows the device to connect with various interactive content, enabling its users to see, hear, and feel simulated intimacy like never before. Maurice does a great job explaining Kiru's products and technology in more detail, and he also discusses the many challenges that they have faced during the development process. But before I get to my interview with Maurice, I want to talk VR porn for a few minutes. I just posted my monthly review recap for May, and for the sixth consecutive month now, the order of the top three sites has remained the same. It's Wanks VR in first, followed by Naughty America, and then Czech VR. So what can I say? These three sites have been leading the way for quite some time, and Wanks just keeps pumping out great scene after great scene with their hot young models. I also named their Back in the Day video as my best VR porn video for May. They are really excelling with their camera positioning lately, as nearly every scene just seems to line up perfectly for me. And Naughty America has also been doing quite well with their camera work as of late. And speaking of camera work, Check VR released a casting video last month called New Way for VR Castings, which featured a moving camera that allowed for the entire video to be filmed without any cuts and in several different positions. It was a first for VR porn, and I thought they did a great job, so kudos to Check VR for that. I actually added an extra site to my list this month by the name of Sex Babes VR. They had a decent debut on my list at number 8, but they still have some issues to correct with their camera positioning. This seems to be the latest challenge that VR porn sites are conquering. We started with scale issues, and then it was image quality, and now we're at a point where camera work is the key element. I'm hoping that sex babes can get it figured out, as they have some really nice talent and content that I would say is maybe on par with someone like, well, like the site that finished in fourth place on my list this past month, Reality Lovers. And May was a special month for Reality Lovers, as they celebrated their first birthday. They had some decent scenes, including their birthday orgy video, and they also launched a new MILF site called Mature Reality. I'm looking forward to seeing what they have in store for us in year number two. So that's a brief look at what went on with VR porn this past month. I would like to keep this monthly recap as a regular feature on the podcast, so I'm going to try to post a new episode at the beginning of each month and then perhaps have another episode sometime in the second half of the month. And if you're looking for more VR porn reviews, you can always find them on my website, vrpimp.com. All right, let's get to my interview with Maurice from Kiru. I was really glad he was able to find the time to speak with me, as I know he has been incredibly busy with all the new developments there at Kiru. I actually saw him in January at the AVN show in Vegas, but he was really pressed for time. So here we are a few months later, and it's nice that he took the time to talk with me and to discuss all of the success Kiro has enjoyed this year. So without further ado, here is my interview with Maurice. I guess I saw you in Vegas, and you guys have been pretty busy since then with all your new stuff coming out. It's really it's really busy. So I, 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 was, I didn't have too much time at, at Las Vegas, I think. It was so, like, so, much, uh, so much pressure, you know, like so much things were happening at that time. It was uh, so. It's good that we can just uh, chat up a little bit and how it uh, uh, for how it's going. So, yeah, as you know, of course, we reali- we, we released. Uh, I mean, there was a pre-release uh, of the launch in in AVN during AVN, and um, we really released it uh, during Southwest Southwest. So, just we wanted uh, because also Austin. I mean, uh, Flashlight is based in Austin, and the the event was also in uh, Austin. So, it took that moment to uh, to release the product. So uh, and and since then it was a little bit like a roller coaster. <laughs> so there's a lot of things happening, a, pos- a lot of positive things, and, and and the reviews of the launch have been really positive. 
at the same time, we released also uh, FeelMe, which is that platform where we actually um, bring together all the interactive content. We realized that um, for the customers to be able to find uh, interactive content and not having to put all the partners on the box of the, you know, like saying these are the partners and on the box and, and it changes and there's people add it. So we said like, let's make a site where we just gather all the interactive content. And uh, so there's like one place where they can come together. So, of course, bumpy rides always eh, in the beginning, but uh, we see that there's a really high conversion of um, people that buy the toy and then buy content. Well, uh, yeah, well, definitely. I was going to say congratulations because I think when I visited your offices last year in Amsterdam, you hadn't really officially released anything yet. So you can only kind of give me like a general overview of what you were working on at the time. And I, exactly. but I could, I could sense your excitement, you know, and then <laughs> one of those items you hinted about turned out to be the, the flashlight launch powered by Kiru and which from everything I've been reading has been a huge success. So you must be very happy with how things have been going so far with that. Yes, we, we, we really, we're really happy. I mean, there's always little things that, uh, I mean, our payment provider suddenly pulled. <laughs> so, you know, on the moment that we launched or like just a few days before, like, like these little, but those things you always got, and uh, but but overall we are really happy, and uh, uh, the the launches have been sold out twice already, so uh, we can't keep up with the demand. That's a really good thing. So um, we have barely made any advertisement yet, uh, because we were sold out before we could actually start our <laughs> advertise at our as our marketing campaign. So so there was no need to start a marketing campaign because because we were already sold out. <laughs> So we were trying to ramp up a production for the device and, uh, and we're already working on new devices. Uh, we have some really interesting things uh, coming. And of course, we try to expand partnerships with gaming uh, companies, uh, with VR gaming companies, uh, making a U- Unity plugin, you know, so, so to, ma- to make it easier for game companies to connect to our devices. So uh, with virtual reality and virtual, virtual reality live streaming, you know, uh, so that our devices also work, you know, in like for cam cam for life, so yeah. So we were trying to get connected with anything. I mean, I mean, with, with any content that we can find on audiobooks, uh, for example, also one of those uh, uh, things. And uh, and then on the other side, we try to connect uh, as many toy manufacturers as we can. And uh, and they are also very enthusiastic. They see they see the potential, and uh, they are also thinking now of how they should make a toy that work, works most optimally because of course we're now in a situation where we retroactively implement like existing toys connected to content right so and now what you see is that content providers are looking at how can we make the experience more rich from the content point of view but also toy manufacturers are going to look like how can we make a toy that is more interactive. So I think in, in in this year or next year, you'll see more and more toys coming online, which are is more seamless integration with the two, right? And uh, and of course the technology will get better, and we're working on automating the the subtitling process, which is like the connecting the movie to the toy machine, machine learning, and you know like these kinds of things. So so everything is gonna get into place. Everything get, it will get more subtle. Or, or faster or, or like more, more realistic. Yeah, I definitely want to talk more about the launch and Feel Me platform, but I just want to take a few minutes and kind of look back on how Kiru developed over the past, I guess it's been four years or so. Cause yes. from what I understand, you started out in 2013 and then it looks like in 2014, you had a, a campaign on Indiegogo. And from yes. there, it seems like you developed your first Onyx and Pearl devices. Is that? Pretty much correct yes. how that worked. Yes. So, so we we actually started prototyping in 2013 with uh, actually no experience of making any toy at all. So nobody knew <laughs> what they were working on. I mean, the, we we knew what we we're working on, but uh, but it, it was a a, pr- a process, right? Because we we needed to learn everything that needs to be learned and far. We needed to learn fast. So um, we made a prototype that worked. But that was uh, still far away from uh, manufacturing, and we didn't know at that moment. But uh, but yeah, but 
but still, we made something with 3D printers and and uh, we made a simple connection with the platform so the devices could control each other. So we could prove the concept that it works. And from there, we actually um, we went live with Indiegogo. Um, we were overwhelmed by the media attention. So we were thinking that we had time enough to write articles and things like that. We just had only interviews, interview, interviews. So it was, it was really like, uh, yeah. It was amazing for, for, I mean, it was like a strange experience because we never had that before. Yeah. And in the Indiegogo campaign itself, we used uh, PayPal as a payment uh, provider, but they pulled the first day that we were live. So we didn't get the money. I mean, there's all kinds of problems. So there's like things that we, we learned the hard way, but uh, we had a lot of media attention. And, uh, and of course, the, and the entire industry uh, really noticed us and also investors came to us. And so we could really make that jump from being in a prototype phase to, uh, to something like a real product that would actually be able to sell and be cost effective also. In that first year, in like 2014, you were pretty much just trying to work on the product and then were they just like a manual mode in the beginning or did they actually interact with the mobile app or did that come later we always envisioned that it would work over a, a, actually not over the app via the mobile but we we actually made a, a desktop uh, app or desktop uh, application uh we learned the hard way was also like a um, the, because of the bluetooth uh, connections uh and, the, and windows they don't work very well uh, so yeah, anyway, we, we had a desktop application, uh, and we connected a female toy to male toy over the uh, long, long distance. And we only could at that point from the female device control the male device. So we, we couldn't yet control the female device. But then when we launched it, all the women were saying, why is there always something that's for men, but not for us? And then, uh, because of we could, um, update our devices remotely, we actually added the feature, uh, later by just updating the uh, firmware, which is also something new um, because no, there's no toy out there yet. I mean, not a sex toy that you could add features in a later date. So we actually were adding features to the device while we already delivered the products in uh, 2015. And uh, in some in April 2015, we started the, actually delivering it. Well, I don't want to skip ahead here, but I'd have to ask, like, in those early days, were you already envisioning kind of what you have today with the FeelMe platform, or did that come later in the process? We started off as a toy manufacturer as a long-distance couple toy. That was our original idea. We had some conception of that it could work probably also with adult content, but we didn't have that yet. Um, then after the Indigo campaign, we were we were uh, approached by... Uh, all kinds of video, webcam, uh, all kinds of adult companies, and they're saying, hey, can we also connect to you? So we, from that point on, we started thinking about how we can make that work too. And then we, uh, in, in a very natural way, we started talking to both the content and the toy industry. So we were on toy fairs and on content fairs. And what we realized there was that these two industries don't talk to each other. They were separated uh, from the, in, by the internet. You know, at a certain moment, uh, the content industry went its own way, and they didn't come to toy shows anymore. So, which means that, uh, of course, if a generation passes, then nobody knows each other anymore. Uh, and then you got a very digital-oriented content industry in a very old-fashioned toy industry, which the, which there are some innovators. I mean, there's a few innovators, but the mo- the biggest inv- the biggest innovations in the adult in the in the toy industry were actually um, the size, bigger motor, uh, shape, uh, you know, these kinds of things. That, that those were the innovations, and there were some there were a few innovators that would, for example, Omabot and WeVibe. The, the, those two companies were already working a little bit about controlling a toy with your app. Or controlling it with music. That, that's what Omebot did, and um, uh, Revive did it with uh, controlling it from the app. So you could control your girlfriend with the app. So, um, so we started realizing that uh, there is a big uh, void. <laughs> we, we were filling a very big void, um, and uh, we we actually started first making content for our own toys, and then we realized, well, what if? And 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 of course, it took a lot of effort to get enough toys to get momentum. And then we started to realize we need to scale it up and and reduce the toys that are already out there. 
right? So we started talking to WeVibe and Omabot and uh, everybody that had a Bluetooth chip in their toy or that wanted to have a Bluetooth chip in the toy. And actually, we, uh, in the beginning, we talked to 10 different manufacturers and I think nine of them said, wow, this is a great idea. We want to connect. So, so we had this, um, yeah, then from that point on, we started to get more and more toys, uh, connected to the platform. Um, but there's a discrepancy between the toy and the content industry. Uh, in a toy, it's 80% women and 20% female toys. Oh, uh, sorry, uh, male toys. And, uh, in the content industry, it's 80% male and 20% female, right? So, um, so we need to, um, and I think in the future, you'll see there's going to be more female content and there's going to be ma- more male toys uh, coming because of this uh, combination of these two. So, yeah, we're working on on, on, on getting, uh, we, we worked on getting it connected. And the more toys we get connected, the more interested the content partners were, right? So, and the more content partners were there, the more toys we wanted to join. And so we got into like a spiral up in the sense of more, uh, yeah, like becoming more and more the standard. Yeah, in connecting interactive devices to content. Yeah, I see like kind of later on in 2015, I believe it was like Virtual Real Porn and maybe Flirt for Free was the first two companies you partnered up with. Yes, they were the first, yeah. So, so yeah, they, they started the first, they, they, and, and then uh, we realized, uh, I mean, we learned everything the hard way. <laughs> we learned that, um, that implement, that we had an, an API implementation, which was, uh, difficult, uh, that took a few weeks to implement and, um, some of them uh, really took the effort, uh, but other ones, uh, they hesitated to do it because of the time and they didn't have time for the roadmap and these kinds of things. So what we did is um, we learned from the desktop that wasn't a good way to connect. We, we changed to connecting over the mobile. So whenever we connect to our devices, we always connect over the mobile because we have much less problems and we found a way to very easily uh, to connect our API. I mean, let partners connect to our API. And, and that really made a difference. So uh, we made it easier for partners to connect and uh, we re- rearrange everything on the background for them. So uh, whenever whenever there's a new toy, they don't need to worry about it. Whenever they integrate it, it's done, right? So we'll just be keep on adding new toys and and they will be integrated. So, uh, and that, and I think that's what they like because they're, they're already thinking about what's going to happen if 10 toy manufacturers are have three or four toys a year, say, uh, two toys a year, you know, that's like, and then you have to uh, constantly change and add new toys. And, and so that's what, yeah, that's what we did. So, so we are really envisioning that in, in this year, we're already knowing that there's going to be something like a thing like we have already 21 toys now connected, but we'll have another seven this year, uh, that we already know of. And there are companies that are actually now working on making an interactive toy. Or actually planning it, putting it into the roadmap. So, so, so we'll see more and more toys coming online, and and of course the yeah content getting more interactive. And you've got a pretty good list of partners with Oh My Bob, We Vibe, uh, Content Sign. You've got uh, Bedoink now, Naughty America, Cam Four, Three. I'm Live. What is the Detoro? Detoro Media is that a partner of yours as well? They made content specifically for you. Yeah, the Toro Media is a uh, Akiro is actually originally a toy toy company that we started off as a long distance couple toy, and uh, the Toro Media is actually our content uh, partner, and and they arrange our content, and they were the first to implement our technology because we needed to have someone to be brave enough to <laughs> to be as a guinea pig and the first ones to implement it, right? And then as we have implemented, we could show that to other people. I mean. Somebody has to be the first, and if nobody wants to be the first, we have to be ourselves. So I mean, it's uh, so Datori is a kind of a com- as a as a daughter company of uh, of Kiro. And then you mentioned Fleshlight. You you partnered with them pretty early on, I think. It's yes. good, very good name recognition for you. But I assume you kind of said, "Hey, these guys know what they do. They do it well. So let's just let them do the the sleeve part, and we'll do the other stuff." I guess. Exactly, yeah. Uh, name, name, and logistics. I mean, they have an ex- excellent uh, logistics uh, system. Just, I mean, uh, that worked out really great. We can deliver worldwide, and uh, as a small company, we would never be able to have done without their help. So, so they are really, uh, I mean, they're amazing guys. They, they, uh, I mean, the, the organization is uh, tip top. You know, uh, it's, a re- it's a really like a uh, well run organization. They have a good marketing, uh, so, so they really help us. On those sides, and all, as you see, also at the fair, the uh, the boot was amazing. 
I mean, I think it was the most beautiful boot of of them all. So, so yeah, so they they really, they really help us, and the name, of course, and the name recognition, and the, that gives instant re- reliability. I mean, we are starting to get it, but beginning nobody knew about us, right? And um, and then if key if flight is, has their name on it, then there's, there's some kind of reassurance that everything is is okay. So early on, it was like just having the devices interact with one another, and then later on, you switched over to having it interact with the content. So when I was there in your office, we were talking about how you were actually coding the content. Has that changed at all since we last spoke? Or are you still doing it the same way? So we, we were doing it manually. What we're doing now is actually the computer is actually looking over the shoulder. I mean, not over the shoulder, but um, they are looking. Um, so 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 it, so they are tagging frames, right? So the, machine, so the machine is learning about what's happening in the scene, what kind of are happening and then uh, so we're starting from fully manual we were moving towards semi uh, so uh, computer aided right so the computer is is helping the subtitler to say hey but I already recognize this you don't have to do this let me do it and then from that point well the more we do it the more the computer sees the more it sees the more it learns uh, and then hopefully one day and that could be very fast or not it depends on how it goes but we are very confident that we can within the in a year or two years that we can do 80% automatic. And then, uh, yeah, the, the last uh, percentage is going to be the hardest. Is that your part of the partnership with your partners then? They provide you with the content and you actually go in there and, and code it yourself then? Yeah, we'll make them interactive. So what we want to we want to work towards, it, uh, they, they are just uh, people just upload videos and that they will be automatically subtitled for them. And then there's some maybe some uh, possibility of, Maybe if there's like a detail not working, that they can, somebody can change it themselves a little bit. Like, and then of course machine learns again. That that's a little bit where we're working towards. So, so and and then of course we'll uh, enlarge the amount of interactive content out there. Basically, right now, what you have with the flashlight launch, you already have content that's basically stroke for stroke what you see in the video. Is that correct? Correct. Correct. Yeah. Is you said there's going to be some sort of video recognition software in the future that'll hopefully do that for you. Mm-hmm. Let's talk a little bit more about the launch. You have the manual mode as well as this interactive mode too, right? Yes. So either the user can either set it on manual and they can go up to, I think it's like 180 strokes a minute, I believe. Correct. Or they can use it as an interactive device with whatever content they have. Somebody else, right? Or a webcam girl or a girlfriend can control it. They can also use it on the Feel Me platform. Let's talk about that a little bit. Now you've got all these partners and they've put their content on your platform and yeah. other, and other devices now as well are working with you in that. And how has that been going? What's the feedback been on that so far? So at the beginning, we'll, we had some hiccups, right? We're starting to get everything now. We, we actually on purpose soft launch, so we didn't give too much attention to it. But what we do have is that every toy has a brochure or a, it mentioned in the manual that they need to go to uh, feel me to and connect with content, which the most, I mean, almost 90, 95 of the people do and they actually buy videos or make a subscription. So from that point of view, it has been really successful. I mean, we have like super high conversion. For us, it's going to be, um, I mean, we need to make sure that the experience is is tip top and, and we're working on it, right? Like for us, it's the first time that we ever made a platform like this. So it's also a learning experience, just like the first toys. So overall, went over our expectations so that's good but uh, i think it could have been more if we had it tighter <laughs> you know what i mean <laughs> if we could have if, if we had everything uh, if that if that payment provider didn't do this you know if the like, these little bucks weren't there if the uh, server capacity was a, a little bit higher yeah so so we're still working on it to get it better and uh, there's more and more content coming i mean we have more requests from content partners than what we can handle of course, and because there's so many requests, we need to work on this optimization uh, process. So, so there will be more and more content coming online uh, from different games. We have five different game manufacturers, of, uh, like adult game uh, companies that want to connect. Uh, so that's why we need to make this Unity uh, or Unreal uh, SDK so they can easily connect to our uh, platform. There's dating companies that want to uh, do something, audiobook uh, companies that want to do something. So, and then we have to make all different kinds of technologies for them to make them, we make that work. Uh, 
and uh, I mean, there's, and there's, there's feedback from the launch and they were saying like, why can't we control our launch from the app? So we're working on something that, that we can add to our, yeah, like that, that we add this functionality. We can also control the uh, flashlight. So, you know, yeah. So, so there's all kinds of things that, that need to be done. Um, but I think overall, I think we're very happy. Uh, very happy with the me platform and also the partners are, are very happy. Um, it's, it's just that we need to get everything tight with uh, then feel me and then start promoting it actively. So that's going to be happening in the next month, I think. And then you're going to be producing more launches, yes. I hope, yes. to, to uh, meet the demand. Yes, yeah, for that. yeah. We we really ramped up uh, uh, the, the 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 production of the of the launch. So uh, and then we're actually not selling to distributors. We're only selling on the site, and we're not selling on the these shops only on our sites and, and, and we're sold out already. So, and distributors and with shops are knocking on our door if they can buy it, but we can't even, yeah, we can't even sell it ourselves. I mean, we, we have so much demand that we, yeah, there, there's no need to sell it with a low margin to a distributor at the moment. Looking towards the future with this Feel Me technology platform, is the focus there at Kiru moving away from the hardware side and kind of moving towards the software side? So, so I think it's going to be entire solution we're going to be offering. So, um, uh, that we're becoming more and more a technology company in the sense that we'll have, um, we'll have our toys, uh, but we can also, also are selling our technology to other toy manufacturers. So they just put their te- our technology into their toys and it will work platform, right? So, uh, from, uh, from the box. So, so what we want to do is make it as easy as possible just for them to, connect and for the same for content so so we want to have this uh, ecosystem where you say like i want to have interactive toy too and no problem here's this the chip put it in make you make your design which you're good at and uh and, and it will be interactive do you have plans to come out with any new hardware or update the onyx and the pearl at all yeah yeah there, there's new things coming so uh, we're working on new toys well i'm sure You'll be successful in whichever direction you guys go and whatever product you develop in the future. I'm looking forward to following that development. Hopefully, we can do this again You know, in okay, the near future cool. when the yeah, next big Kiro product hits the market. Okay, okay, let's do that. Let's do that. All right. Well, thank you so much for your time, Maurice. I really appreciate it. Uh, thank you so much. And many thanks again to Maurice for taking the time out of his busy schedule to talk with me. I think it's pretty clear from what he said that it has been fairly hectic over at Kiru for the past few months or so, but the good news is that they seem to be handling it quite well, and the future looks very bright with their new launch device and their new Feel Me platform. It will be interesting to see where Kiru goes from here as they continue to work with other teledodonics companies and content providers to further develop a standardized platform for interactive devices. And of course, I will be keeping my website up to date with any new developments, and perhaps Maurice will be joining me here again on a future podcast episode. For more details and links to any of the products mentioned on this podcast, please visit my website, vrpimp.com. So that's going to do it for this episode of the VR Pimp Podcast. I thank you for listening, and until next time, this is Scotty Velvet, signing off. Bye.